Okay, let's look at some more quadratic inequalities. Now we've looked at the basic method and we've talked about factorizing uh, quadratics and looking at a diagram to uh, help us. Now the examples here just require us to be on our toes a little bit. Now the first one looks extraordinarily simple. When is x squared less than 16? And of course it'll be no surprise to you that a lot of students want to say well that's obvious it's when x is less than 4. Well it's certainly true that if x is less than 4 and x is positive that x squared is less than 16. But of course if I said to you, ah oh, but if x is negative 8 that's certainly less than 4. But of course if you square negative 8 you get 64 which is definitely not less than 16. And the whole point is that once x reaches negative 4, anything less, or sorry, more negative, but anything less than that, if you square it, you get an answer more than 16. So this inequality, which looks like a single inequality, leads to a sandwiched inequality. Now, it's probably best to just try and learn that. Uh, if there is a square term on this side with a single inequality sign, it does lead to this sandwich. Because otherwise you've got to start um, doing the full works on it. So in other words, you've got to write that as x squared takes 16 less than 0. Let's give the pen a shake. It's going to make it write a bit clearer. Um, now you have to look at that and say, oh, I know what that is. It's a difference of two squares. So you have to factorize it like that. Then we'd be working with our graph, which would look something like that between minus 4 and 4. And we'd be saying, oh, but we want it, we want the graph to be negative. So we want to be down here, and that gives us the negative 4 to 4, which is a little bit long, isn't it? Um, so I'd like to look at this and say, there's something I've got to remember here. So let's, let's give this a little star, OK? That's, the, that's the, the tricky one. OK, let's look at the second one. Now, the temptation here is to put the 8 whoops, let's try and do the right thing, put the x squared on that side and say, OK, that means that x squared is greater than or equal to 8, which is true. And then, again, make the foolish mistake of saying that means that x has got to be greater than uh, the square root of 8, which is partly true. But of course, if you think hard enough, if x is more negative than negative root 8, then if you square it, you get a number that's more than 8. So when your inequality is this way round, when it's a greater than type, and it's still x squared, instead of getting the sandwich inequality, you get the exclusive inequality, okay, the outside. So on our number line, if that was root 8 and that was minus root 8, then we are here and we are here. Now I think that that's the way to try and really master these. So to just remember if it's a single less than with a squared, it's a sandwich. If it's a single more than with a square, it's an exclusive. Because that will keep cropping up. So given that one there, on the previous method, what would you be doing? You'd try and factorise it. And of course it doesn't factorise. So you think, oh crikey, what have I got to do next? I've got no idea. Well, 
completing the square will always come to your rescue. So I'll complete the square. So that's x plus 1 squared. Square that number and take it away. Minus 7. And put the negative 8 on the other side as plus 8. What have we got? We've got a single inequality, a less than with a square, which is like the one I've just put a star by. And so this means it leads to a sandwich. What is the sandwich? Well, either x plus 1 is less than or equal to the square root of 8, or it's more than the square root, uh, negative the square root of 8. Now, take one off each part of the sandwich, and I end up with, uh, let's get this right, root 8 minus 1, which is the correct answer. But of course, you know what will happen, don't you, in the exam? They'll say, simplify your answer. So we mustn't leave root 8 like this. Write it as 2 root 2. So our final answer is x is sandwiched between negative 2 root 2 take 1 and 2 root 2 take 1. Now that is a topic that you really got to make sure that you understand because you can guarantee that in any uh, quadratic inequality question you won't just get a simple straightforward one. They're going to try and catch you out a little bit and this is a very, very common way that they try to do it. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.